The vehicle we have on display today is Jackal 1. And the change for our the standard vehicles is that this is a wheeled reconnaissance vehicle. Its main route and role is to prove routes, usually in the lead of follow-on forces. It may well prove a new route, which could take considerable time, or an older route. However, irrespective, it will still take considerable care to ensure that the route is clear. While out on patrol, it will report constantly back to headquarters, telling them of their location and of their progress along the route. They'll also inform them of the state of the route and anything that is suspicious. They'll check for any vulnerable points, which may be places where there could be an ambush, or where they have to slow down, which of course, in its own right, becomes and makes them vulnerable. They'll also check for improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, and the main indicator for these is to stay at ground. Of course, what they'll also do is look for local inhabitants. And as you can see today, on their patrol, they've come across a group of local inhabitants out taking a stroll. You'll also notice that these inhabitants are armed. One of the main training tasks that we conduct now before going on operations is a lot of judgmental training. So we don't just jump straight off of the vehicle and assume that they, because they've got weapons, they're insurgents or the enemy. The standard procedures we go through is to conduct some form of search, but it's all done in a friendly manner to promote what the British Army does on operations. We'll also note that the soldier conducting the actual inspection does not approach the female of the group. Unless there is a female soldier, the lady will not be uh, patted down or searched. If necessary, we'll check all documentation, and if necessary as well, may confiscate any weapons. In this instance, the local inhabitants are friendly and are indicating to our patrol that there may be an insurgent position on their route. The Jackal vehicle itself has been particularly well received by those using it in Afghanistan. One of the main points for it is it is open top, which is of course pleasant in this type of weather, not so when it's raining. But it does allow them to drive through towns and villages and actually interact with the local inhabitants while still mounted, or as you've just seen, to be able to dismount more quickly than you would from a track vehicle. Having finished speaking with the local inhabitants, our Jackal crew will now continue and prove the rest of the route through to their midpoint position. The Jackal vehicle you can see today is Jackal 1. It has been through an upgrade recently and has been casually named Jackal 2. The main differences between the two is upgraded armour, a, a stronger engine and the mount on top allows the vehicle to actually traverse the weapon through a full 360 degrees. The vehicle weighs up to approximately seven tons. And Jackal is a high mobility weapons platform with a unique airbag suspension system allowing rapid movement across varying terrain. Hence why it's been well received in Afghanistan. Its primary role is deep battle space reconnaissance, rapid assault and fire support, where mobility, endurance and maneuverability are important has also been used for convoy protection. Its open cab, as I mentioned previously, allows for easy interaction with the local population and for quick dismounting. It is designed to protect personnel against roadside explosions and mine attacks. It has a crew of three and a fuel capacity of approximately 202 litres, which is about the same as four family cars. It has two weapon mounts, one on the front for a 7.62 GPMG for the commander, and as you can see today, a 7.62 on the roof. It can also carry, top-mounted, a heavy machine gun or a grenade machine gun. If you're carrying a HMG 12.7mm, it can carry 2,000 rounds, and if it's a 40mm GMG, it can carry 480 rounds. The Jackal now continues with his route clearance, having reached his midway point. At the midway point on the mound, he will then stop 
assess the situation and collate a situation report for headquarters. And this will include all of the information that they receive from the local inhabitants that they encountered on their route. This information then will be assessed by headquarters and they will deem whether they need to react upon it, reinforce or withdraw the jackal from it. Jackal was introduced for Afghanistan. It's a hybrid vehicle in that the hull was recast in the same shape as a Spartan and the scimitar turret has been added. It's given improved hull protection, improved seating to defend against IEDs and mine blast, and increased and enhanced sights, specifically the driver's sight, which has now a combined night and day sight. You'll also notice the caging around the vehicle known as bar armor, which is there to protect against RPG rounds. Initially, when the wrecking vehicles came into uh, operation with the British Army, they weighed approximately eight tons. This vehicle comes in at around 12 tons. It is specifically a formation reconnaissance vehicle, which improves all the area behind enemy lines. And Afghanistan, again, like the Jackal, can be used to remove routes and provide assistance. It has a 30 mm Radon cannon, which can fire six rounds automatic and it has a mixture of armor-piercing or high-explosive rounds. It also has a 7.62mm GPMG machine gun, coaxially mounted. It has a crew of three and a fuel capacity of 300 litres, which is approximately the same as six family cars. It can carry up to and around 200 rounds with a mixture between armor-piercing and high-explosive and about 11 boxes of 7.62mm rounds. Soon to be replaced by the Expressionist Vehicle Scout. As the Simba 2 moves in to support the Jackal, as you've just seen, the Jackal comes under fire by insurgents. The Jackal itself and the Scimitar are purely reconnaissance vehicles and their weapons are there to provide local protection only. They should not become decisively engaged with the enemy. Having withdrawn from the position, their main role now is to report to headquarters and ensure that all the information about the enemy position is passed up. This information includes the fact that there are dismounted insurgents and there is a vehicle.
The Challenger 2 has now reached the midpoint of his route. Having destroyed the vehicle on the way around, he can now report to headquarters that the vehicle has been destroyed and that the insurgents currently have moved off. The vehicle you see in front of you today has been with ATDU for some time and has been renamed as Megatron. Challenger 2 entered service in 1998 and played a significant role in the Iraq war. The most recent addition to this vehicle is the introduction of a remote weapon station on top of the turret. And this allows the loader to fire a GPMG also from under armour. You'll also note that it's got extra bolt-on armour and extra caging for bar armour to protect against fine explosions, IEDs and RPG rounds. It has a crew of four with a driver, commander, loader and gunner and has a fuel capacity of 1,727 litres which is equivalent to 35 family cars. But there's a road range, however, of about 480 miles, around 550 kilometres, which is approximately the same as one family car. It has a maximum road speed of 59 kilometres an hour. So you can imagine that 60 plus tonnes of metal coming towards you at over 40 mile an hour can have a significant impact. And in some occasions, even more so than firing a weapon. It's armoured, it has one 120 millimetre rifle barrel, and at two 7.62 machine guns. It can carry 30 thin stabilized armor piercing rounds and 16 high explosive and three smoke. However, as mentioned earlier, this can change depending on whatever mission the vehicle is on. When it came into service, its weight was approximately 62 tons and the vehicle you see today is currently in excess of 70 tons. It is the British Army's main battle winning capability significant ability to hold ground and to project force. It's currently awaiting its life extension program, which will extend it out to 2035, and we'll see a significant upgrade to the fire control system and its sights. position, the Challenger 2 keeps an eye on the insurgent position. And as it moves back and out of reach, but within a visual distance, the insurgent position is reinforced. The Challenger 2 then forces to headquarters. And at the same time, headquarters now decides to send in the infantry and send out warrior 510, which is a section variant. decides to use his dismounts and they decisively engage the insurgents.
to worry as it's dispatched back in. It scans past the actual location and ensures that the insurgents have been defeated and are now dead. He now continues with his route and reports back to headquarters that he has been engaged and has now destroyed the insurgents. And that in fact they have been defeated and are dead. That now these are current insurgent location, the vehicles have been destroyed and the current been upgraded and reinforced position. you see today, as I mentioned, is a YF-510, which is the Section variant. It came into service in the late 1980s and is now in excess of 26 tonnes with its bolt-on armour. It also has a 30mm Radon cannon, which also can fire six rounds automatic and has the same sort of split and makeup of ammunition between armour-piercing and high-explosive. With a crew of three, a commander, gunner and a driver, they can also carry up to seven dismounts in the back. It has a fuel capacity of 741 litres and can carry up Challenger armoured repair and recovery vehicle that you see today may well have gone out on the route patrol with the leading elements. But while it moves along the route, it will provide assistance should anything either break or require some form of recovery. But what it will also do is look for areas that can be used as repair locations should it be required to remove a vehicle back from an enemy location.
Upon initially moving into position for the craft to line up to conduct a winch, protection will provide it. The Krav and Warrior report back to headquarters that they're now getting into position to recover the Warrior. The headquarters decide that because it's so close to the insurgents' position that they will send out some extra support to provide protection and they deploy sympathy. Thank you. 